David Ehrenstein gave us a homework assignment. Walk along glider flight patterns for in our homes. But David, the dog ate my homework. No, really, the dog ate my homework. See? Bad dog. And Phil Rossoni has already submitted videos with cool perspective shots. I want to try some angle shots, too. Then Michael Thompson asked me to hotwire cut some foam for gliders, thinner than I've ever cut them before. Yikes, Mike. How thin do you want it? At some point, it becomes a shape-shifting blob. Although it is kind of cool. But thin foam is just as well for flying circuits in my small, cluttered house. Thinner means lighter, and lighter means slower. And slower means more time to think and steer around stuff. And after all, this video is for those fanatical, weight-cutting, National Free Flight Society guys. I'm going to have to be able to make sharp turns. I turn by generating more lift under one side than the other. And that goes for hand flying, too. In that case, I shift my hands to one side of the glider. So we get turning by more lift under one wing. That gives me an idea. The masonry stove is warm, so there ought to be some hot air rising near it. So if I angle the glider toward the stove, oops, I melted it on the door, which gets hot. But hope springs eternal. Yeah, it banks and turns. Sharp turns can cause a drop in altitude. So gain altitude by walking so fast that the glider goes up and over, but slow a bit and lift your board so it cannot go over. Even with bigger gliders, you can still learn to fly them, even with just one hand for lift. It's a good demonstration of Reynolds numbers and how bigger gliders are more efficient. You might be thinking, do these walk-along gliders ride thermals? I'll leave that to you to check out. One last thing about tight turns. Fold in vertical wingtips, and you can make ridiculously sharp turns. Then the challenge is to fly through your wake turbulence. For David's duration challenge, I'm probably going to have to go outside. Ooh, everything's frozen. No thermals today. But outside flying is unpredictable. I can only fly outside when the air is really still. Maybe sunrise, sunset, or some overcast days. And I'm lazy. If the air is moving at the same speed as the glider, I can just about stand still and ride the ridge lift. So you NIFS folks, how many opportunities are there to create a flying machine that goes as slowly as an F1D but is simple and cheap enough to be a gateway for people into free flight. How many occasions are there to reach up and feel the air flowing through your fingers, then sculpt the air and direct it to levitate your craft? There's so much innovation to be done. Developing designs, materials, activities, education, and it's great even just for an aerobic aerodynamic break. Jump on in.